Hi, welcome back to Everyday Behavior. So this is the fifth video in this series where we're talking about ABA. In this video, we're talking about the differences between an RBT and a BCBA. We briefly touched on this in one of our previous lessons, but just to go back and kind of dive into this in a little more detail, a BCBA is kind of the supervising licensed provider that has their master's degree in education or special education or psychology. They have a master's degree Plus, uh, they've received 1,500 to 2,000 hours of supervised experience. So they are a very qualified professional who's received extensive training in applied behavior analysis, working with children with autism, and treatment of children with autism using applied behavior analysis, and have been uh, received a certificate. That, so they passed an exam, uh, and they have their certification saying that they are a qualified professional to treat your child. So the BCBA is your supervising clinician. Uh, they have the most training and the most experience in ABA. Um, and they are the ones that you're going to meet initially. They're gonna do that initial skills assessment. They're going to do that detailed background history. They're gonna set the baseline of your child's goals and progress. Uh, and they're going to maintain the authorization of your services. And so every six months, you'll meet with your BCBA again for that reevaluation to monitor where you're at with your child's progress. And it's kind of like a parent teacher conference. You're going to monitor where your child's progress is. You're going to set those new goals. You're going to do updated assessments to see how they've been tracking or progressing on these standardized assessments. Your BCBA is also going to provide uh, suggestions on which behaviors to intervene on in the home setting. So they're going to do a lot of parent training and parent coaching with you to teach you how to apply these settings and or these um, things in the home setting when you're not there. So they're going to do a lot of parent training, parent coaching to address behaviors that maybe you're seeing at home that your BCBA or uh, your child isn't exhibiting in the treatment setting. They're going to create that treatment plan, uh, and they're going to monitor that over time. But your child's going to reach goals and master out of specific skills during that six months. And so every time your child ma masters a goal, reaches a um, skill, they're going to adjust or increase uh, the expectation. So maybe they've mastered one step commands. And so your BCBA is going to tell the RBT, okay, now I want you to go on to two step commands, or maybe they've mastered a uh, one word request. Now they want to work on two word combinations. Uh, so your BCBA is really going to be determining what the next goal is in your child's treatment. They're going to create very specific protocols that are going to tell the RBT, the technician that works with your child on a daily basis, exactly how to do their job. They're going to say, I want you to do this, and I want you to do it in this way, and I want you to do it this way every time. And then they're going to go into the session where your child is working with uh, their technician, and they're going to observe the technician, they're going to observe your child, and they're going to provide feedback to the technician about, okay, let's tweak this, or let's change this, or let's adjust this, let's modify this, let's try it this way. If something's not working, they're going to go into those sessions to do more detailed analysis to figure out where the breakdown is, where the problems are if the child isn't making progress. And they're going to meet with the RBTs or the technicians once a week individually outside of your child's session to talk about, okay, here are things that you need to be doing. Here's how you can do this better. So there's a lot of oversight from the BCBA down to the RBT. The BCBA can't do specific things. So they can't friend you on social media um, per their ethics code. They can't share their personal email or phone numbers. Uh, so typically uh, you're going to need to call their professional um, company in order to contact them. If you're in a public location, they're not going to initiate conversations with you. Now, if you initiate a conversation with them or if your child comes up to them and it's like, hi, Miss so-and-so, uh, then they may uh, return that, but they're going to have a conversation with you about how do you want us to approach things if I happen to see you in Target or Chick-fil-A or somewhere like that. And they can't discuss other clients uh, with you. Now, the RBT is who's going to work with your child on daily sessions. Your child may work with one specific RBT, but they may work with a team of RBTs who are supervised by the BCBA. So they may rotate through a couple of RBTs during the day, or they may see different RBTs on different days of the week. Your RBT is a 
professional who practices under the BCBA with very close supervision. They have to at minimum have a high school diploma, but many BCBAs have a bachelor's degree. Um, and many, uh, or sorry, many RBTs have a bachelor's degree, and many RBTs are actually going on to pursue their BCBA, and so they may be in school and receiving additional training. The RBT is a professional designation that's offered through our uh, board, but it says that they've received a minimum level of training, that they passed a basic competency exam, and they are bound to follow our ethical principles. And so they typically work directly with the clients using those protocols that we talked about that are created by the BCBA. And they are implementing those protocols and those interventions and working on those goals as directed by the BCBA on a daily basis or in weekly sessions. They're going to be the ones that you're going to meet with when you pick up uh, your child from sessions or when you drop your child off to sessions, you're typically going to be talking to the RBT. So you can definitely uh, tell the BCBA or tell the RBT, hey, we're struggling with, with this at home. Can you let the BCBA know? But the RBT can't tell you, oh, well, you should do this or you should do this. They can say, well, this is how we address this in session. But they can't tell you how to address something at home because that's something that requires more skill because there might be other variables that are in place that they don't have the knowledge uh, to know kind of what those variables might be. And so the RBT's job is not to tell you how to respond to that, but to take the information, to take in your concerns, and then to communicate those concerns back to the BCBA. Um, and so also, the RBT is going to inform you how your child did during that session, what you worked on, their progress for that day, any behaviors that maybe they saw in that session or anything that they feel about that session is important for you to know. And so they're going to tell you how things went that day. One important things to know, like we talked about, the, BC, the RBT cannot provide suggestions on how to address behaviors at home. They can't change the treatment goal by adding to or changing the treatment plan. And just like the BCBA, they can't friend you on social media or share their personal information or discuss other clients. And if you meet them or come across them in public, they have the same rules that the BCBA has as far as they have to wait for you to initiate contact with them in public and there should be a plan ahead of time of, you know, how do you want to respond or how do you want them to respond if their child comes up to you and it's like, hi, Miss so-and-so, it's good to see you. Uh, because sometimes kids are, get excited when they see their therapist out of um, treatment or out of sessions. And so how do you want to address that? I hope this clarifies uh, who some of the individuals are that your child might be working with. If you have additional questions about these, I definitely encourage you to talk with the BCBA that your child works with. But uh, you can find more information on our website at everydaybehaviors.com. You can also like or follow us or subscribe to any of our channels, including on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or our podcast by searching for Everyday Behavior with Dr. Marianne. Thank you and have a wonderful day.